Have you ever been looking through type definitions for a library and seen a function declared multiple times, all taking slightly different arguments and wondered what's going on? This is called function overloading or method overloading, and it allows you to define a function that may have several different parameter types. In plain JavaScript, we can do this by testing a parameter to see what it is. Without function overloading or destroying your function's parameter types, this wouldn't be possible in TypeScript. If you haven't seen the same function declared multiple times in a TypeScript definition file, you've almost definitely seen this error where it says, no overload matches this call. In this video, we're gonna have a look at what this error actually means and how you can build your own function overloads. Let's have a look at this add.js function here. You can see that it takes a number one and a number two. Then it's going to define the first argument as number one. It's going to define second as number two. Then it's going to test num1 to see if it's a string. And if it is, we're going to cast it to an int. Otherwise, it's just going to be the default num1 value. And then we're going to do the same for num2. And finally, we're just going to return first plus second. So you can see for all of these calls here, it just returns two. So we can pass in a pair of ints. We can pass in a pair of strings. We can pass in an int and we can pass in a single string. And then we can pass in a string or a single int. But how would we do this in TypeScript? So you can see here we have the same function and we have num1 and num2. And TypeScript is already complaining at us because it doesn't know what num1 and num2 actually are. They have an implicit type of any. So let's add some overloads to add to tell TypeScript what parameter sets we were going to accept. So to do this, I'm going to say function add. And then I need to specify what add is going to return. So I'm going to return a number. And our first overload here is going to be a number and a number. So let's say num1 is a number, num2 is a number. Okay, so this satisfies our first call down here. What about a pair of strings? Let's copy this down and say that the first num1 is a string and then the second is a string. Okay, so this satisfies our second call. What about our third call here where we have a string and an int? Copy this a couple more times. So we have string and then we have a number. And then finally, we have a number and a string. I say number and string. So all of these function calls are happy now, but TypeScript is still complaining because num1 and num2 have an implicit type of any. So we don't actually know what num1 and num2 are. So we're going to use unknown. The unknown works a lot like any, but it means that we have to do some checking on the value before we can use it. So you can see here, if we say that num1 is any, then we get no TypeScript errors. But if we say that num1 is unknown, then we still get an error here because we can't perform this plus operation on unknown. So we need to tell TypeScript what we expect these values to be. So we can say let first equals num1 as number, and we can do the same for num2. And then we're going to check to see if num1 is a string. And if it is, we already have first defined as a number. So let's run this. And you can see for all of these calls here, we get two and TypeScript isn't complaining anymore. Let's take a look at something a little bit more complicated. We have this find user function here that takes a query, a select input and options input. You can see that we have a query here of gender is male, and we're going to be querying this mock data. So you can see we have a few entries here where the gender is male. We have a select, and these are the fields that we want to select. So we're going to select the ID and the first name, and we have an options object, and we just have one option inside of the options object, and this is to limit the number of items returned. So in our first call, we're just going to be passing in a query, in the second call, we're going to be passing in a query and select. And then in the third call, we're going to be passing in query and options. And then in the fourth call, we're going to be passing in query, select, and options. So you may be wondering, will options be treated as select? So if you dive into the function here, you can see that we're doing some if else logic to see that if select input is an array, and if it is, then we're going to define select as select input and options as options input. And this case here covers if we've passed in query, select, and options, and then else, this is going to cover if we've passed in query and options. 
If we just pass in query and select, then this case here will also be covered. So let's run this function. And you can see for our first result here, where we just pass in a query, we get back all of the items that are male. Where we pass in query and select, we get back all of the items that are male and we just get the ID and the first name. When we pass in a query and options, we just get one item returned. And then we pass in query, select and options. We just get one item and we just get the ID and the first name back. Before we dive into the TypeScript, you may be wondering why we don't just use a single object as the input. So we could just wrap all this in an object and this would make our function much easier. We could just say select input is equal to an empty array and options is equal to an empty object. There's two answers to this question. The first one is that some libraries such as Mongoose have decided to use function overloads and understanding how these work are going to give you a better understanding of how the library works. And then the second answer is sometimes you might already be passing in an object. If we take a look at this example from a previous tutorial where we built a Twitter clone, you can see that we might pass in request and reply, or we might pass in connection params. So if we have a look at the two usages of build context, you can see here where we're building our Apollo server, we're going to pass in request and reply. And then down here for our subscription server, we're just going to pass in connection params. So there's a better way we could type our build context function. The first thing we need to do is to remove this context type here, and we need to lift it up above build context. And I need to define our context. We can't just use the return type of build context. So I'm going to say context is going to return a request and reply, and I'm just going to take that straight out of here. And it might return a user, which is going to be of context user, or null. So now we can start defining a method overload. So I'm going to say function build context. And we're always going to return context. And in the first instance, we're going to take request and reply. And we can type that as fastify request and fastify reply. And we're getting one error here. And this is saying the overload signature is not compatible with the implementation signature. Let's try type context as any. And you can see that this error goes away. And that gives us a good indication that this function doesn't actually return context. And you can see here that it's an async function. And so we know this is going to return promise context and TypeScript is no longer complaining. A second implementation is going to take connection params. So let's copy this. And we can say that this is going to take connection params and connection params is going to be of this type here. And I can just copy that out. Now let's refactor our function a little bit. And I'm going to say if request, then I'm going to return this block here. Otherwise I'm going to remove the if here and TypeScript is happy now. So why would you do this? If we come down to build context and we try pass in request, you can see that we get an error. No overload matches this call. And this is because we don't have an overload that takes connection params and request. So this is a good indication to the person using build context that you can either pass in connection params or request and reply. So let's go back and have a look at how we might implement our find user in TypeScript. So I have the same find user function here and TypeScript is getting really angry. You can see that we need to type all of our function inputs. We need to type select and a lot of things down here. So let's start off by defining some types. So I'm going to type data is equal to type of mock. And we're going to refer to data a few times throughout the function. Next, I'm going to say type query is equal to a partial and you can see here that data is an array and that's because our mock data is an array. So we just need to get one item from data. So I'm going to say number and this number here refers to the number refers to an array having an index. Next, I'm going to type select and select is going to be a key of data. So I'm going to wrap this in some brackets. I'm going to say key of data 
we're going to use number again. And this is just going to refer to data having an index. And then we want this to be an array. Next is going to be our result. So I'm going to type result is going to be equal to data or it's going to be equal to partial data. Next is going to be our options. So type options, it's equal to limit and limit is just going to be a number. Let's have a look at these types. So you can see that data is an object and it's an array of that object. You can see that query is just one element from the array and all of the items are optional. If we removed partial from here, it would mean that your query needs to have every single item that is inside of the objects in mock data. Select is just an array of all of the keys that are inside of our object. And result is just an array of items from our mock data. The next thing we need to do is to define our overloads for find user. We're going to copy find user function. And I'm going to have four different overloads. You can see down here that there's four different ways we might want to use this function and we need to have an overload for each one. So the first one is just going to be where we have our query and this is going to be of type query and then we return our result. The second overload we're going to have is where we have our query and we're always going to have our query. So this is going to be of type query and then we have select input and this is going to be of type select. Then we have options. And this is going to be of type options. And this is going to return our result. Select input and options have to be optional because if we have a look at this first overload here, they don't exist. In our third overload, we're going to have query. Then we're going to have select input. And this is going to be of type select. We're going to return result. And then in our last overload, we're going to have query. And then we're going to have options of type options the returns result. So let's type our input here. So query is going to be of type query. Select input is going to be of type optional unknown. And then options input is going to be of type optional unknown. So now we can define select as type select. And this is just going to be a default type for select. And then options is going to be of type options. And then if select is an array, then our select property here is going to be select input. So we can say as select. And then for options, we can say as options. So if select input isn't an array, then we either have options in the select input place or we don't have select input or options. So select is going to be an empty array as select. And then options is going to equal select input as options. So we have a couple of other TypeScript issues down here. So if you have a look at this keys constant here, you can see it's just an array of strings, but we know it's actually keys of item. And we know that item comes from our mock data. So we can type this as key of data. And then we're going to pass in our number again. And then this is going to be an array. So now we can see that keys is all the keys that might exist inside of an item. So if we scroll down, we have a couple of other issues here. So select is giving us an issue here. It says no overload matches this call, but we know there is an overload that matches this call. But the issue is, is TypeScript doesn't know what select is. To TypeScript, this is just an array of strings. So let's define this as select, and we can do the same with options. So now when we go to type in select, we get some fields here that we can choose from. And then if we do the same for options, then we get a field here of limit, and this must be a number. So if we type, put in a string here, it's going to say that limit must be a number and not a string. So let's run this. So you can see that we still have one error here. This overload signature is not compatible with its implementation signature. And the reason for this is if we scroll down, we can see that we have if options and options limit, we're going to return result. 
And if we have a look at the signature here, it says K of string, of string or number, but this should be result. So let's type this as result, and this fixes this issue and we can run our code here and we get back all of the items that we would expect for all of our queries. So this is function or method overloading in TypeScript. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.